Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Okay, we are back. And so yesterday we started a topic, which is one of the topics that we get asked about the most. And it's from an agent's perspective of why they would want to switch brokerages. Or more specifically, we get a lot of questions from agents. Uh, I used to call them people who are uh, realtor curious, who are thinking about becoming realtors, and they're wondering how to go about choosing a brokerage. Um, so we did. We talked a lot of detail about that yesterday. I'm going to summarize all the points, the 10 points I made yesterday, and then what Julie and I are going to do. And Julie, welcome to today's show. Thank you. It's always great to be here and share the show with you. Looking forward to the yes. continuation here. Me too. And yeah. what to, uh, today we're going to talk about actually what's even more of a fun topic for us is if you're a broker, how to know if it's time to stay or go. In other words, if you're from a broker's perspective, you know, do you really want to – well, maybe you're considering starting a brokerage or maybe you're considering you know, expanding a brokerage or maybe you're considering getting rid of your brokerage. So we're going to talk about all those things today. And I think from an agent's – if you're listening as an agent and you're listening to us as we talk to brokers, where you're going to, what you're going to walk away with is absolute sympathy and empathy for your brokers because that is a hell of a hard business. So, But just to summarize the agent conversation we started yesterday, agents, here's the bottom line. Nowadays – uh, you have a lot of choices. You have a lot of options. I, a commission split, what a lot of you think is the most important thing. It's probably one of the top five most important things. But at the end of the day, you want a place where you can grow. If that, in some of you guys are finding great homes in traditional, uh, you know, uh, brokerage environments. But what I'm seeing happen across the country, our agents are no longer really giving a hoot about a broker's physical location. Brokers used to. Uh, recruit agents based off a, geog- a geographic region around a, a specific office. The brokerage's office has never really been designed to invite consumers in. That's not really a place where people, you know, buyers and sellers meet. It used to be that way, but it isn't anymore. Nowadays, brokerages' uh, physical locations are just there mostly to help the office recruit because psychologically our industry believes that an agent's going to choose to be part of a brokerage because of the physical location of the brokerage. Well, EXP, for, as just an example, has completely uh, invalidated that theory. So from an agent's perspective, what I want you to consider is the fact that you do not have to have a, a physical location. Your broker does not have to have a physical location anymore. It's like Amazon. I know Amazon has stores here and there, but Amazon is in the cloud, isn't it? Amazon is not a, a department store. And yet they're the biggest retailer in the world. You don't go to Amazon, do you? You go online to Amazon. And that's how people, that's the relationship that consumers want to have with real estate people. The paradigm for how consumers want to interact with agents is, you know, it's 100% online in terms of looking for houses, in terms of, uh, you know, contact. Now, those relationships or those contacts obviously translate to driving neighborhoods and meeting you in open houses and meeting you at Starbucks to go look at houses or having you over at their house to give an evaluation of the house so you can get it listed and things like that. But the day and age of a physical location for a brokerage being um, important for most agents is is just gone, doesn't exist anymore. Number two, and this is something also, agents, I want you to be aware of, a lot of brokers have um, their, their they're stuck in this model where, like, and agents, you guys make this mistake too. You think that you're, you're looking for a broker who is going to offer you some kind of training. And here's what, you, here's what I hear continuously. Most of the training that's being offered by the brokers is the training that's necessary to help you fill out forms and all the rudimentary stuff that's necessary as a licensee. You can get that anywhere, guys. That's nothing. That's a completely and total, total fungible information. You can go to the MLS, and you can get that same level of information. Brokers are not going to teach you how to lead generate. Brokers are not going to teach you how to set up a business. Brokers are not going to teach you how to pre-qualify leads. They're not going to teach you how to create a pre-listing pack. They're not going to teach you how to run a profitable business. The education that you really need 
uh, to run a successful real estate practice, you're going to have to figure out how to get on your own ultimately. That's the reason that our company exists, okay? You know, that's the reason our co our coaching company has been around for decades is because we know that brokers are not in the business of coaching and training realtors. Brokers are ultimately in the business of recruiting agents. And here's what the – I'm going to tell you guys – I'm going to tell you a true story. Um, Julie and I were – this was prob this was at least 12 or 15 years ago. We were at a private brokerage event. It was one of some of the top brokers in the country. It was in Arizona. And um, this was after the main event. There wasn't very many people there, only like 100, but this was after the, a main event. Julie and I were there as guests. We weren't presenting anything, you know, uh, and we were sitting by the pool. And I'll never forget this conversation. One of the executives at one of the most prestigious, you know, brokerages in the country who you've all heard of kept on. He was talking with another guy, and Julie and I were just sitting there on these Barco loungers or whatever they were and uh, listening. We were eavesdropping, but we were, you know, participating here and there. And they kept on referring to their brokerage models, and these are brokerages with thousands of agents as body shops. And I had heard that concept before, but I wasn't really aware of it. And I asked them what it meant. And they said, well, in our brokerage, this is exactly what he said, in our brokerage, the average agent lasts a, a barely three years, and in that amount of time, they've sold to their centers of influence, their past clients, their mom, their dad. They've basically sold to everyone they were going to sell to unless they decide to uh, professionalize their approach and start proactively lead generating. So we run a body shop. Our job is to get as many agents in the door because we know that many of them will fail in three years or less because they sold to all the people that they can sell to. And that's what happens. That's the exact model. That's what real estate's been forever. You get your real estate license. You're excited. You tell the person at church, you tell the person who cuts your hair, you spread the word a little bit, your mom lists her house with you, you know, your brother lists the house with you, you have the local, you know, it doesn't matter. You're going to pick up some easy transactions. Most of you over three years will sell an average of probably six to eight houses if you're just marginally conscious, okay? And if you're a marginally nice person, people will want to do business with you. That's just a fact. But in that same time, unless you're actually learning how to run a professional uh, have take a professional approach to your real estate practice, you won't last. You'll just get caught in the churn that is this industry's body shop model. You guys understanding? So when you're choosing a broker, and I hear this in your, I read this in your emails, do not worry about whether the broker is going to offer any kind of uh, coaching or training because chances are that coaching and training is nothing more than just basically helping you to learn how to fill out forums, which you can go to the MLS and you can take a class and probably get a better quality um, you know, delivery of that same content for free. You know, So just do keep these things in mind. Your broker's job, their principal function in life is to recruit more agents. It's not to coach and train you. And furthermore, I want you to think about this, agents, legally – they really have to be very careful in how they treat you because you're independent contractors. You, many of you aren't aware of this, but there's occasionally there's little boil-ups of you know, states trying to basically make it so that all agents are no longer independent contractors, that they're employees. And the reason that they're doing that is because they want to be able to charge employment tax. It's a tax grab. So the industry, brokerages, have many times defended in very expensive litigation the idea that agents are not employees, they're independent contractors. But what do you have happen is you'll have occasionally a brokerage which oversteps. They start having mandatory training, mandatory meetings, mandatory this, the other thing. Those of you with real estate teams and you have uh, – not, you're not aware of the litmus test to determine whether someone's an independent contractor or a uh, W-2 employee, go online and research it. Um, the IRS has got a list of questions, and probably your state taxing authority does as well. And I have to tell you, all of you are violating uh, the definition of what an independent contractor is versus an employee. You know, literally, if you control their schedules, if you, um, you know, require mandatory meetings, you know, things I said, if you just do certain things that would be it remotely resemble that of an employee-employer relationship, they will claim that you were illegally calling your employees independent contractors to avoid taxes, and they're going to – okay, so that's happened to our industry many times. Um, and that's the reason brokers are scared shitless of uh, even most smart ones will never go anywhere near uh, trying to even remotely have you guys look like employees, which means they're never going to hold you accountable to anything. 
which means they're never going to be able to coach you with any kind of authority because then all of a sudden it could be translated that that relationship is now employee um, employer versus um, uh, versus you know a, a contractor independent co- you know that you guys get the idea. So these are the types of things that go on in brokers' minds. That when you're as an agent, you, a lot of you are naive when you get into the business and you're expecting some big broker to give you a big warm hug and you know have you sit by him all day and you know they're going to show you the way. I those relationships they may have existed before I was Julie and I are in the business, but they don't exist anymore. That's the reason that most agents are thrown to the wolves. They buy buyer leads from Zillow. They do all this other dumb crap because nobody there is to tell them any different because the industry is predicated on it being a body shop model, and they're assuming that you will not last beyond 36 months. Most people are in and out of the industry in less than it, – basically, it's 24 months. So I want you all to take this into consideration because it's the truth. This is the truth that nobody else is going to tell you because it's the ugly truth. It's the ugly side of this industry. It's how this industry really looks at agents. Now, look, if you're listening to me right now and you're an agent, you're a broker, you're an office manager, and you're an exception, well, know that you are an exception because you know as well as I do that most brokerages do not operate beyond the realm of what I just described. If you happen to take pride in the fact that you do offer an environment that's more inclusive and it's more – conducive to basically helping agents foster their own success, good for you, but you're a minority. And by the way, offices like that usually can't scale because it's it's one or two people inside a brokerage that might have that sort of true caring sense. But as soon as you add two or 300 agents that they're responsible for, at some point, they're going to be over diluted and they're not going to be able to really have that same effect on as many people. So there it is. We're back to the same place, buy shop model. Any thoughts on that, Julie? No, it's, you know, the what's going on in their head is what to do about all this information now that they've been enlightened. All right. Well, let's go and talk about, thank you. Let's talk about brokerages. When it's, here's what I wrote down. Uh, these are just my chicken scratch notes, but stop, when to know when it's time to go being a broker. And I'm going to, I'm going to go through these points relatively quick. A lot of them overlap. Um, Julie, help me out here so I don't lose my voice. Number yes. one, you're tired of making less than 3% margin. And that's the um, industry average for most real estate brokerages, they make less than 3%. Most of them are making around 2%. So that means if your brokerage makes around, you know, a million dollars in commission, that the broker himself is making 3% of the million dollars in commission after expenses before his own personal taxes. Can you guys do that math in your head? What's 3% of a million dollars? 30 grand. So Yeah, so that's one your... one mistake or one bad quarter away from being upside down. That's right. I mean, that's the number truth. two. You have um, okay. Number two. The, the, another reason why you know it's time to go, uh, as far as being a broker. You. This is a kind of a funny point, but you've had enough of running an adult daycare. You've had enough of feeling obligated to listen to everyone's problems. You've had enough of uh, hearing about you know so and so's this issue and that issue, and having to you know wear uh, wear doctor you know be Doctor Phil. And for all these agents who kind of take advantage of you, we're in the back of your mind the whole time you're talking to them. You're asking yourself, A, how insane am I to subject myself to this insanity? And B, why is it that this person is now actually trying to proactively lead generate, right? I mean, you're, you've had enough of it. You don't want to do it anymore. That's another surefire sign you need to think about changing, uh, maybe not being a broker anymore. Number three, you realize your average agents make more income than you do as an owner. And that's the question that I'm, that's the situation a lot of you are finding yourselves in. Big brokers, I have this conversation with you all the time where I'll have a conversation. We'll drill down on what you're actually making, and you'll be very proud of yourself. You'll have 100, 200, 300 agents, you know, or 500 agents even. And then we'll talk about how much you're actually personally making, and you are almost never making as much money as even the top, you know, five agents in your brokerage. You have somehow accepted the fact that that's okay. Julie, point number four. Point number four, you are tired of your agents leveraging you for more commission, more services, and more leads. Get sick of it. Maybe that 3% isn't worth it to you if you're even at that 3%. Point number five, you don't want to get rid of the 24-7 antivirus software that must run in your head. You can't remember the last evening, I think you meant to say, you do want to get rid of the 24-7 antivirus software that is running in your head. You can't remember the last evening weekend or vacation where you didn't have a low-grade worry going on or maybe even a high-grade worry going on. You know, it, Brokers are not without liability and not without worry about all of the deals going on or possibly not going on with their agents. 
And, you know, Tim, you and I hear about this from our broker agents that we coach. We know what they're dealing well, with. And, but just here's yeah, the thing. That's a, bur- that's a burden that you guys get used to carrying, and it's optional. That's a burden that you get used to, you assume is normal and natural, that wherever you go, no matter, you could be having sex with your spouse, sitting on a plane, having tequilas, and, you know, wherever you have tequila in Mexico or whatever. You could be having whatever in, in your mind. A dominant in your mind in some cases is this low-grade worry about did this happen, did that happen. And we get used to it as business owners, but what I'm here to tell you as from the brokerage perspective, that low-grade worry is going to get worse as the economy continues to change, as the housing market continues to change. So we're going to give you a solution here for agents and brokers here in a second. Julie, I'll go through the next couple points. Okay. Point number seven, if you have, if you had a way of having a graceful access, keep, keeping your brand and not the burden of being your broker, you'd probably take, uh, take it. So I'm going to say that again. Let's say I'm talking to somebody in um, Iowa, and I don't want to say the name of the company because there's not very many big brokers in Iowa, so you guys will figure it out. But this brokerage has been around in, uh, for 30 or 40 years. It's a generational business. And um, you know, I'm, that's all I'm going to say. So they are in the process of trying to decide whether or not they want to stay in the brokerage business. But what they don't want to give up is that um, heritage. They don't want to give up the name. They don't want to give up the um, the ego, but I don't think that's a bad thing, and the pride of having created something. They feel an obligation to have this thing that was created for them continue on. And I totally and completely understand and respect that. Right? just makes sense. So if there was a way that you could have your cake and eat it too, if you could keep your brokerage name and your brand but get rid of all the burden of being a broker, the overhead, the worry about you know, over, uh, staffing and the worrying about commissions and the worrying about lawsuits and the worrying about E&O insurance and the worrying about you know, all the horse shit you guys have to deal with from a listening to agents' perspective and all their drama, if you could shed all of that and get rid of all of it, and still make money from the brokerage and still have your brand, you'd say yes, wouldn't you? Stay tuned. All right, so point number eight, you know that brokerages don't sell for any meaningful money and you feel trapped. There's a big fallacy in our industry. Um, Oh, I'm not remembering his name. We had him on the podcast. Um, In my opinion, he's one of the top three. Um, Real Trends, I think, was the guy. Yeah, well, so we had him on the podcast, and we talked about essentially what brokerages sell for. And again, if you never, if this is new information for you, I think you're going to be shocked. Brokerages basically don't sell for jack. When you hear a brokerage being sold, when you hear a number being published, what you don't know are the the, um, the tenants of the deal. So you might hear about somebody selling some big, huge brokerage for 60 or $70 million. But what you don't know is they gave the person like a million dollars up front. The rest of the money was – uh, on being paid over the next five years if the business continued to grow every year at 10% and that person has to now become an employee. So if you really look to see how these deals shake out, it's really pathetic. I mean, at the end of the day, brokerages really aren't worth anything. Now, from an agent's perspective, now I know we're focusing on brokers here, but from the agent's perspective, your business is worth nothing. Your agent business is worth absolutely nothing. The only way for you to successfully transition out of being a real estate agent if you had to or chose to, would be referring the leads that you generate from your business off to another agent, hoping that agent's efficient at you as closing leads, which probably they won't be. That's it. Maybe you get money up front, but you probably won't because they probably won't have it to pay. And so the, you know, the idea of a real estate brokerage selling for anything, the way they value it is they'll give you like a nickel or seven cents on the dollar for your assets, the desks, the chairs, and all that, basically nothing. And then they give you a flat fee per agent, per you know, active agent, and then they'll sometimes give you a flat fee per listing. That's it. It's not worth selling. I've had many conversations with people in the past few years about selling their brokerages. In almost every example, the amount of money that they were going to sell it for it was completely and totally insane. They would have been financially better off had they kept – now, financially, not necessarily spiritually or mentally or you know, physically better off, but financially, they're better off if they basically just stay in the trenches and fight it out because they're making more profit from the business than if they were to sell it you know, by just basically muddling through and suffering. And some of them financially don't have the option. They can't take a decrease in income. They can't actually work for less, so they have to keep suffering through on their brokerage, you know, dealing with the brokerage aspects. Um, and, you know, guys, what scares me for people like you, or if, you're, if I just described you, is that you're going to be in a transitioning market. And if you've not been in the business since, you know, if you only have been in the business since 07, 
you don't know what it's like during a real estate reset, which is what we're experiencing now. So you're not going to know how to cut back in time. You're not going to know what it's – your agents – here's what's going to go a window in your future. When agents see their personal incomes dropping, they're going to disappear. You won't find them. They won't show up to the office. You'll, they'll just, they won't answer your phone call. That's the first thing that they do. That's called denial. And then what they're going to start doing is they're going to go – agents are going to start going to the next phase, which is anger, and they're going to start blaming you. They're going to ask you for a greater commission split. They're going to try to shake you down for more leads. They're going to try to blame you for their lack of ability to compete in this new market. They're going to try to blame you for the fact that the buyer leads that they've been buying from Zillow are just you know, not even worth it if they ever were in the first place. That's what happens, and then it gets worse from there. So brokers and office managers, I want you to listen because we have a solution for you coming up. Julie, next two points are yours. Yes, next two points. Number nine, it's your name on the door, and maybe it's even a generational company, a family company, and you don't want to feel like you failed. Number 10, you know that when the market shifts, that agents will bail. You know that they will go to ground fast and leave you with all of your fixed costs and no revenue. We've seen it time and again. Some of you guys have lived through that. Agents will bail. We still, to this day, we have new uh, coaching clients that will say, you know what, I got out during the downturn, and I finally just got my license back, and I'm ready to get back into it. They took a break. They checked out on you, but your expenses didn't go away. Back to you, Tim. So here's what I want to offer all the agents and all the brokers listening right now. When you're think- if you're thinking about switching, if you're thinking about agents, if you're thinking about choosing a brokerage, if you're thinking about switching brokerages, but mostly brokers, I'm talking to you. I want you to feel free to take advantage of what I'm about to offer you. Um, Julie and I are going to carve out time in our schedules, and we're going to give you guys um, an opportunity to have a direct communication with us so we can help you make financial decisions for your future based on best practices. So if you're interested in having us help you solve the Rubik's Cube that you've created for yourself, I want you to email me directly, tim at timandjulieharris.com. Tim at timandjulieharris.com. And Julie and I are going to put together a uh, private conference call where everyone who is interested in knowing how to, you know, brokers and agents, where we're going to give you guys a solution and we're going to tell you exactly what we feel is, is frankly the only business model that's going to be relevant going forward for the real estate industry. There's so many changes that are happening. And, you know, we could have gone on and on with our list, um, but here's the bottom line is the business itself has is going to change because of I buyers, because of organized commission discounters like Redfin. It's going to change because of all these other things that are starting to impact the way that consumers see real estate uh, salespeople and realtors in general. And if you're caught with legacy costs or legacy thinking, um, you're not going to make this. You're not going to make the switch. You're not going to make the turn. And it's going to happen faster than you think. We saw that happen in the three previous recessions where Julie and I were coaching, is that people wait too long to make decisions because they think they have time, or they think what we're saying isn't relevant to them, or they think that somehow their, unique, their market has a set of unique characteristics that's going to cause them to be immune to any sort of meaningful market shift. And In every case – you guys are going to be the ones that suffer the most because all you're really doing is procrastinating the inevitable, which is making the hard decisions about your business. So I want you to do this. Email me directly, tim at timandjulieharris.com or julie at timandjulieharris.com. We'll respond personally, and I couldn't offer this during, like, say, for example, May or June because we have like 10 times the listeners as we do this time of year. So this time of year, there's, you know, listening to us now, there's probably like 12,000 of you, and listening in replay, there might be, I don't know, 25,000 of you, but if this show were playing in May, it would be the number would be probably like, you know, listening live would probably be like 60,000, so we'd be overwhelmed. But for those of you who have appreciated what we've said the past couple days and you're ready to listen to or hear about um, what, frankly, is, in our opinion, the best way forward as far as uh, the real estate brokerage model, I want you to email me directly, tim at timandjulieharris.com, and Julie and I are going to put you on a, uh, a live. It's going to be you know, basically a mastermind, and we're going to present to you what we think is the best model that out, is out there in the industry right now that it's going to, it already has proven itself to be just so beyond um, anything else that's uh, you know, even been ever considered for the real estate industry. I'm, I'm truly excited about it. So Tim at TimAndJulieHarris.com, brokers, if you want us to help you, coach you, consult with you, how to essentially position yourself going forward, and agents, the same thing with you, just email me directly, Tim at TimAndJulieHarris.com. Julie, anything else you'd like to say to these guys before we round the bend? 
don't wait. That's going to fill up. We're going to get busy. Absolutely don't wait. You said even May or June. I'm thinking, you know, I know January is pretty slammed around here too. So, yeah. you know, don't be one of these getting ready to get started when it's finally the new year you're going to think about doing something. That's not yeah. really acceptable if you know anything about how we go about business. So get to work, and I've got to get to uh, right. premiere. So I'll see you then. Yeah, so we'll do – so, guys, here's my idea. I would like to have – um, you know, a couple hundred of you on a uh, mastermind in the next uh, couple days, and then Julie and I will kind of walk you through exactly what we think the best practices are uh, for agents and for brokerages in this shifting market. And it's based on our own personal experience coaching some of the top producing agents and brokers in the country. And um, a lot of these ideas and the concepts we're going to show you are going to be things you've never been exposed to before because we've borrowed them from other industries. And I think it's going to be a revelation to some of you because we're going to give you permission to, frankly, stop spending money. In a lot of cases, brokers especially, we're going to tell you to absolutely crash and burn, you know, burn and get rid of a lot of the things that you think you have to have in your brokerage that are sucking away all your profits. So it's going to feel like, I think for many of you, uh, because I've talked to a lot of you individually about these ideas, some of my personal clients. And, um, you know, here, I'll give you guys one. You don't need a physical location anymore. It's obsolete. Agents don't care. You can recruit just as many agents, if not more, without a physical location. That should make you feel pretty damn good. So if you're interested in learning about what we feel is going to be the only business model for brokerages and agents that's relevant going forward, email me directly, tim at timandjulieharris.com. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.